I'm Michael Broers. I'm the Professor of Western European History here in the Faculty of Oxford, and I'm Fellow and Tutor in History at Lady Margaret Hall. I teach a very wide range um, of history, mainly modern European, 18th and 19th century, but my, my real interest uh, is in modern Italian history, and uh, particularly in the Revolutionary Napoleonic period in Western Europe, um, and that pretty much goes with my linguistic expertise. Over the last several years, I've been engaged in writing a three-volume history of Napoleon Bonaparte, which has pretty much absorbed my life. Um, he's one of the most important people in European history. It's a very crowded field. But one of the reasons I decided to write the life was that it can now be based on a whole new version of his correspondence, which is greatly enriched and expanded. So I think it's going to be a very different, and I think, far more effective life than anything that's been written before. My own research has always been on the revolutionary Napoleonic period in the early 19th century, but my real focus has always been on Italian history in that period and to a certain extent Spanish. So uh, taking on a life of a major political figure was rather a new departure for me. Um, I like the little history, local history, uh, I've worked on uh, banditry, I've worked on resistance to French rule. Uh, I've particularly become interested in popular religion and how that clashes with the modern state and the ideas of the Enlightenment. And my current archival research um, is on the law, is on the legal reforms of the period, because it's in this period of European history, um, excepting the British Isles and one or two other places, that the institutions of public administration and particularly of the law became pretty standardized and that was the work of Napoleon. For me, and of course it's been my life's work, so it's, it's never easy to be objective about it, but I think the period of history where the Napoleonic Empire held sway over a great, great deal of Europe is very formative, uh, particularly um, where, where we're at now, with Brexit, um, with all the tensions within the European Union, and also the seeming strength of its inner core. So much of that can be traced back to the Napoleonic period. Um, because within that time span, uniform systems of public administration, and particularly my own interest of the law, even of the police through the gendarmerie, were brought to so many European countries, particularly Western and Central Europe. And these institutions tended to survive Napoleon's fall in 1815. So what you've got is a, at the very basic functioning level of day-to-day -day life, are systems of the law, of government, of administration, that are shared in pretty much uniform fashion by most of the core countries of the European Union, and which are also very difficult to export elsewhere. My own real interest at the moment is on the legal codes, and particularly on the codes of procedure, that is, how trials were run, um, how the legal system ran. And of course, before Napoleon, this was incredibly diverse across Europe. After him, it's surprisingly uniform. Oxford's a wonderful place. Uh, I was a student here. I began my research here as a research student. Um, it's got the Bodleian Library, of course, and particularly the Taylorian Institute uh, for Modern European History and Literature. Truth to be told, the other good thing about Oxford is it's very close to Paris, which is the place where anybody who works on Napoleonic history has to go. Uh, it's only a shot away on Eurostar door to door, which is marvelous. I think one of the most interesting things I've found in my personal research about Napoleon as a person um, was that he had a very good sense of humor. He really knew how to wind people up in a gentle way. He was a great communicator and personal manager within his own circle. Um, and it's, it's interesting to find that out about someone 
One of the joys of such a detailed correspondence as well is that you can trace his reactions to things almost hour by hour because when you start to read the correspondence, it's got more to do with SMS than it does to do with letter writing. He's firing things off to three or four secretaries all the time, plus his own uh, personal writing. I think one of the most poignant things I discovered was um, how he was feeling and reacting in the, in the immediate aftermath of his divorce to Josephine. And it's almost like reading somebody's texts. He's texting her, he's writing to her all the time at all hours of the day. Um, in very personal ways. He, he just couldn't adjust easily to the change in his personal life. And uh, I don't think any of us had ever had that information before. But it was a very human touch in what is obviously a very public life.